call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to either approve the agenda or make any amendments, anything. I want to add an um, executive session brief about the employment evaluation of me, town manager. So it should be brief. Okay, add executive session. Do it at the um, end. <clears throat> Uh, we'll do it at the very end, end of the meeting, after, after number four. Okay, anything else? No, I'm good. Okay, just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Public comment. Uh, we don't have any uh, appointments this evening, so we'll just turn it right open to public comment. So if there's anything that like anybody Jesse. wants to bring up or share with us that is... Just, yeah, uh, just not part of the agenda. Now's the time to do it. We had one on in person first, and oh, I'm sorry, one online first. We'll go, Jesse. Yep. Hey, everybody. Um, just wanted to put it on your radar the Juneteenth celebration that's happening at the band show on June 19th. Uh, that's a Wednesday. It's 5:30 p.m. to 8 p.m. I'm sorry, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And um, everyone is invited. There'll be free barbecue. There'll be a band called La Cum Musique, um, art making, all kinds of things happening. So it'll be a fun, fun afternoon. That's uh, Wednesday the 19th. And that's put on by the Equity and Inclusion Committee. Okay. Thanks, Thank Jess. What, what time, Jess? Five to eight. All right, Brian. And oh, I, wait, sorry. Jesse, I have a question. Do you want to pick up that check on Friday? Did you want Pam to send it to the con the person? Uh, somebody will pick it up. We'll okay, pick it up I'll so we can have it there. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, yeah, I'll let Pam know. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. All right, Brian. Yeah, I just want to let you know, Teresa, I don't know if you talked to Kelly, but we scheduled a walk on the class four portion Yep. On the 24th. She That's said it. she drafted an agenda and <clears throat> sent it to you for your approval. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you get it? Yes. Okay, cool. Good. Two weeks from today at 4 o'clock. Yep. So, Dave, you might be interested in that. They're doing it with Geo Honningford. Is that how you say his last name? Honningford? Oh, down my way? Down Parham Road there. Yep. The classic park. And Kelly said she reached out to Gary and Berta to let yeah, him know. to let them know. 24th at what time? What's that? Uh, 24th at what time was it? Four o'clock. Four. Yeah. That's the Perm Road. I don't know if uh, if you want to let that uh, Mr. Honingford know. I don't know if he wants to be here. I think he did want to be there. Um, June 24th, uh, contact Geo. Yeah. Sorry, Dave, I didn't, if you want to go, I just didn't know it was a select one. That's the... Um, night, but I was just happy I could get everybody... Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I'll go down, and I'm close enough, so I'll probably come down on the wheels. Yeah. And uh, if I have to leave, I will leave. Yeah, meet us at Bob D's place here at 4. Yeah. It's yeah. closer to me. It's, it's, um, it's remember that when Gio was here, Honingford was here about um, oh, Royalton, yeah. and we have the, yeah, and we have the road, yeah, so remember he kicked it to the Class 4 Road Committee, so they're... They're talking a Wildcat Trail or whatever, yeah. in the Royalton section, and yeah. wondered if we'd yeah. be interested yeah. in mm -hmm. yeah. I'll be cur I'm curious, I haven't gone down since I found out that the Snow Machine Club cleared it out. Because last time I've been down there, you couldn't even walk down that road. The right of way, is it anywhere near where the power line is? No. Power, power lines are more than the swamp. Okay. No, I mean, I go down there deer hunting and I would just have to walk all around. I mean, there was, it was like this. I don't think. That's on the, on the Royalton section was pretty grown in, you were talking? Yeah, because Bethel's line is just like on the Bob Dean's line, so it was like you could actually see a road for maybe 75 yards and then it would go. Oh, okay. So it's not far to nope. the Royalton line. And that's a good a good question. I don't know where that class four road starts. Did it start at Bob Dean Dooryard? I, I thought we put a map in there. Starts right at the driveway, right? Or I right thought. at his 
I thought it started at his house, but I yeah. think there was a map in that packet. I'll have to look again. Not much of it there. I'm going to have to look again, but I'm pretty sure there was a map in that packet. Yeah, because remember he came with the one I had. There was. There was a map mm. in that packet. Because you wouldn't even know that's a road. It's, they've never been used and are not used enough, so just peeled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other public comment? I did have um, a couple that was in the <clears throat> town office today when I was leaving. They were maybe talking about if maybe we could get the sheriff's department to put in a couple extra patrols on the bottom half of Camp Brook Road. Okay. I guess there's a lot of traffic driving fast. Okay. Um, I did ask them to um, start increasing their patrols on Gilead. Um, because there have been complaints about speeding now that the potholes are gone. Some mm. people are complaining about speeding. So I did ask him to go out and um, do that. There seems to be a mixed feeling about whether or not we should put the portable speed sign out there. Some people feel it makes them go faster. Some people think it can slow down. But until we're done spreading gravel, I figured we won't do anything just yet. So, um, But all right, so I'll let them know. Sheriff yeah, Camp they, they said more of uh, weekends. The weekend travelers coming up and over the mountain are going sure. pretty fast. One so, in every 10 cars might be a Vermonter. Yeah, so if, if maybe if the okay. sheriffs are on <laughs> in around the weekend, maybe I they could sit yeah, up there a little bit. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Almost all the time. I always Man, the the brakes aren't coming into that stop sign. You've had a couple accidents there. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, all right, I'll <laughs> let the sheriffs know. <clears throat> all right. Anything else, public comment? Again. Yep. Yep. We got two guys this week, and um, I think that they were on. I thought they were on Gilead this morning, but I haven't seen them. But um, but we're just have two guys. I th mm, I think until Thursday. So, but I'll let them know. Yep. We were waiting for some material. We were hauling, so we were having some delivered, and we were hauling. So um, to stockpile, we've been stockpiling at the recreation area. So that's where that material's going. So we were hauling yeah, we were ourselves. Trucking it up there this morning. Yeah, so we were hauling it there <coughs> and uh, having some delivered there as well. So. Okay. All right, we'll uh, move on to our first agenda item, which is we have an individual that would like to uh, be officially appointed to the White River Valley Ambulance Board. Yeah, he has a great letter in here. He's a, he attended the Warva meeting as a guest, and he has um, experience in financials. He also has um, experience in EMS. So he was excited. They really liked him, and he was happy to do it and was excited to be appointed. And it's a one-year appointment. I like that. I do not. I do want to make it clear that I'm not a COVID. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I meant to highlight it. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, he's on the property up there for a while. Mm -hmm. Yep, it was a nice letter, and, and he it? attended, and he was very nice. So, um, they were happy with him, and oh. thrilled to have him. He may take over that role that they wanted as assistant treasurer, but I'm not sure yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further discussion? No. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, all right. And Babes Bar has a catering event permit request for June 29th at the White Church for the Pride Fest event 5 to 11. Any, any questions? Same as they've done. I think you did the same one last year, right, Jesse? Same event, thumbs up from Jesse. Same event, this one is actually amended to be to, until 11.30. Um, yeah, Anne so said she left me a note about that, but. All right, I didn't um, see that, so. I the wrong time on there, okay. All right, well, we'll make Please. it 11.30. As long as you changed it with the DLC, we're good to go. So. As long as liquor, as yeah. long as liquor control knows, you're good. <laughs> so, but we'll change to 11:30 on the agenda. Okay. Any further discussion? Just need a motion to approve the request as amended. So moved. Second. Okay. 
Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then we have a Cockadoodle's request for a first class liquor license. And uh, Vermont Mobile Spirits request for a first and third class commercial cater kitchen liquor licenses. Now who's Vermont Mobile? They're the ones that have the small kitchen prep space in one of Kevin Barry's buildings. So we've approved it last year as well. Okay. So they, they just do catering. So they don't have on-site service. They just are caterers. So they use prep there and they need an address. And the same thing they did the last year. I'm not sure if it's the build, which where they're located. Yes. Yeah, I think it is. It could be. Yeah. But that's who they are. Okay, so just need a motion to approve those. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And discussion of application of the hazard mitigation construction grant. So the state of Vermont is doing something unusual, which is they're willing to pay for our match. I wrote 24%, probably meant 25. And um, anyways, if the project is funded, we actually had already written a hazard mitigation grant for this um, existing eight by four box culvert at the intersection of Winterberry and Gilead. It needs to be upsized to eight by six. And they've already come out and done the borings and stuff. And um, so it seems like this could be a good fit for what the state is doing. And if that's the case, we've paid, um, we, you know, we paid for our share of the match for the engineering, but we could get the structure installed at 100% funded if we're chosen. So it seemed like maybe it would be a leg up for us since we already had done the hazard mitigation um, plan. Yeah, so it was kind of shovel ready and, and it was already funded with their money anyways. So, but it's a, this, I guess the governor had put in, I think like 12 million and so it'd be 100% covered so it wouldn't cost us anything and it's structure that needs to be updated. So, so that was our thought was, or my thought was doing that structure. Sixty-four. Oh, sixty-four million. Okay, yeah. never mind. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, it's gonna I missed one the zero. Heck of a no, there's, yeah, there's a lot of money there, <laughs> and um, and it and it obviously there were some other locations, but we tried. Our first thought was Camp Brook, but they won't allow us to use the money on a federal highway, of course, because you be know we've got that. We've got some big structures up there that need to be done, but they said no. So this to me seemed like the next logical choice, we can get a grant to do, a structures grant to do um, the Peavine Bridge. And right now we're renting the temporary bridge at, you know, for 16 bucks a month. So it seemed like this on Gilead would be the way to go. And that's only if we get approved, right? If we get awarded the grant, so. Okay, is everybody good with that? Do you really need a motion on no, that? No, just, just as long as you guys are. Support the application, that's yeah. part of the grant yeah, process. Sure. Yeah. Okay, we'll say <coughs> consensus. So we'll get that application in. <clears throat> All right, and then discussion of abandoning the Fairview Street. So, hey. All right, so this is a weird, so this is why Brenda's here. I did some more research, Brenda, and I, funny story is I found that there was a January 25th, 1985 meeting and they, the select board or the town voted to authorize the selectmen to abandon Verona Street in Highland Park as a public road and convey the same for a nominal fee to the abutting landowners. So the crazy thing is, why didn't they also do Fairview at the same time? And they only gave a piece of it to Tom. The other piece is still... Oh, he did. Okay, because I couldn't tell by looking at the map, but I'm like, if you knew, why didn't you do both? So I was a little confused by that, but I did contact the state of Vermont, and 
despite, this was in 1905. So in, in 1905, the land was called Highland Park. You can see it would have been quite the subdivision there, quite the neighborhood. And it was given to the town um, on the condition that the streets be maintained as public highways for the convenience of the public. Um, so, but what was interesting was they never, they were never laid out officially by the select board or given to the state of Vermont. So the state of Vermont has always called that little hook right there, just it's all just Highland. So um, it was just kind of one of those things that was funny. And I went back and looked at Tom Brennan's quick claim deed. And um, so the process uh, for the town is um, you have to post it that we're going to, we're gonna post it for 30 days um, and there's terms on where you have to post, that sort of thing. And then if you get a petition signed by 5% of the voters <clears throat> objecting it to it within 30 days, then we'd have to have a, um, you know, then it'd have to be a special meeting. But if not, notwithstanding the provisions of that, the legislative body or town may authorize the conveyance of municipal real estate if it's directly related to control, maintenance, construction. So basically, you put out the warning, you put it in the newspaper, you put it where you're supposed to do. If you don't get a petition within 30 days, then the select board can convey this. So it would be part, a portion of it to Brenda, a portion of it to her neighbor, and I'm not sure who the other, oh, I'll have to look at the other butters. Um, McCullough. Allen, yeah, uh, McCullough, Allen, Antioch, Badger, Lewis. So you basically, you would split that you know, so each person on each side would get 20 feet. So, um, but like I said, I couldn't figure out, I'm like, why didn't they clean this up all at once instead of waiting? But anyway, so that's the process. Um, there's also a zoning permit was issued to uh, someone in this neighborhood and, and by a prior zoning administrator and they allowed them to build it on this land, so. Uh, this will also clean that up too. It would make sure that the shed now is on their, quote unquote, their property and not the town's. That's why people in any case, they get to use 9% 40 feet and I get 10% plus I get to look at that shed. Right, <clears throat> exactly. Whereas if we split and it. And I can't, you know, that's my main issue. Yeah, and it's, it's been laid out, so I mean, we know where what it is, and so then they get 20, you get 20. Everybody does that abuts it, gets a piece, of it, but it's just funny the way that they... Well, as you know, I, I don't know what you call it, if you grieve it or you contest it. When they put the shed there, I contested it, and you picked right up the minute you looked at that zoning application where your predecessor yeah. literally initialed it and said, and said to my face, do you have a problem with it being you know, yeah. not 25 feet or, or just 25 feet from the, you know, and went ahead and gave her permission to put it there. Yeah, yeah. So it's a funny. So does that mean that that road no longer exists? No, I mean, it, it, what's gonna mean is that or that. Or just the, the you, you, you own part of it. You just own a part of it of Fairview Street. Right. Yeah. So and who's responsible for the maintenance? And oh, the, I see uh, what you're saying because you know. it's, we know what's funny is if you look at the state map, the piece that is not on the hook, quote unquote, of the mm -hmm. drawing mm -hmm. is actually, we could just do Badger and Lewis because the rest of Highland where the hook is that goes out towards Allen, McCullough mm -hmm. and Antioch is on the state highway map. As part of but, Highland. But Brenda's, but a piece of it is just between Brenda and Lewis. So you're right. Um, we should probably just do that section because the rest is obviously laid out by the state and we are maintaining and plowing it. And nobody does anything with that piece in between you and Lewis no, anyways. That was Dick's comment when he saw the meeting. Mm -hmm. it, it, actually, he lives on what's yeah. near you. And right. He wants to live on Highland, so. Yes. You know. Right, exactly. So, so it's that just, would just that would continue right around. That yep. would stay in the part on the part between the, those two parcels would. And it's just land, anyways, that you both mow, right? I don't have to mow because she mows. But between yeah. you, it's mow. It's land. Yeah. It's not a road that we plow okay. or anything. No. Yeah. All right. So it would just be that piece then. All right. We would just. So yeah. What you're cleaning up? What's this other piece of yellow? Well, that's what um, Brenda's saying that. 
Can you look at this map, Brenda? I did look at it. You mean like between Evans and Richardson? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wilkinson. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe you should. That's, that's what the I'm saying. That's the other half of Veronica. That yeah, that's what I think, too, is Evans, Richardson, and Wilkinson just be <coughs> that up, and then it's all cleaned up. Because why? I just don't know why they didn't do it all, but mm -hmm. who's to say? So we could do that piece as well. So that, And we already have approval to do that, because it was voted on and approved in 1985. At, your, at the town meeting um, because they didn't specify they had just said abandoned Verona Street and Highland Park as a public road convey the same for nominal fee to the abutting landowners but they didn't they only chose one landowner I think Tom was on the board at that time oh <laughs> <laughs> not sure what, but he was on one of them well maybe that answers some question so we could we do that one as well and then the measure I'll measure that piece from Lewis's down to the end and we could just do those pieces but it does make sense to clean it up so that it's accurate it's kind of funny how you get these things from 1905 and uh, and it's an easy process to go through so, so we leave this as Highland get rid of this one. all right So the motion, the process to do it is outlined in Title 24, Section 1061, which I put in your um, packet. Yeah, yeah, for you to look at. Yeah, yeah, yep. Once we went through and looked at it again, I was like, no. Oh. But you gave me your two cents. You looked through it, so. It is interesting. That's why I think. I mean, it's funny. That the job is interesting because you get stuff like that every once in a while that comes up. Who would believe you'd be solving issues from 1905, you know? So. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. So what do you need? I need a motion to proceed with the process outlined in Title 24, Section 1061. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right, Brent, so they moved to move forward with it, so we'll get it posted and we'll start the process. Yeah, no, thanks. I'm sorry it's been a while. We kind of put it on the back burner for a while, but um, it's we'll get it started, and then it's once it's posted, it's a 30-day, and then we'll do it. I'll get a hold of the attorney and have them do some searches and get the deeds together. All right. All right, we'll move on. So we have um, discussion in regards to portion of Graham Street that has some riverbank erosion issues. So we included in the packet, Chris and I went out and did a site visit and Mark Boacher was out there. He's the owner of 350 Graham. And then uh, Chris had taken a picture from across the road and then Mark had gone down over the bank and took pictures of it so you can see where it's eroding. We've put out signs so far to close the road just because even when you're standing up there, it's you know definitely going down into the river. And the pictures don't look as high, but they're, it's probably 30, anywhere between 30 and 40 feet high. Yeah. Embankment. So. Um, well, here's, if you come down from the top, if you come down from Royalton Hill Road, Dave, come down this way, that's where Mark Boacher's camp is. And then when you come around here, this is Rogers, Charlotte, Danforth, Rogers, that's their place. And then you keep going um, down, you know, then you'll get down to Pam's eventually. But, so it's right here on this, it's about 240 feet was my, I'm trying to measure online. But, um, what, what, I thought that, is that Graham Street all the way up through there? Yep. yep. Mm. Yeah, when does it turn into the other road? When it gets Royalton Hill Road. 
Rabbit. No, no that's rabbit's next, down. That's the next one. That's the next one down. Yeah, so Graham. In front of Stearns, where Denny Stearns lives. So it's kind of a, we talked to Mark, the oh, Lando. Okay. Right. sorry. I, That's okay. It takes a minute for me for, for. And he, he is, he made some noise about saying that we might be able to move the road closer to his property. And then he spoke to me later yeah. and said, he apparently, Mark Elmore lives near here and Mark has water and Mark wants us to, and Mark Boacher wants us to extend the water line to him. But I don't think we have the pressure to do that. I would have to find out, because currently we're doing the booster pump station for Crystal Drive, not to add more usage. And um, obviously currently we have a ban on us anyway saying we can't add users, um, but I'm sure they would be willing to lift that considering we're you know, part way through phase two. It's not like we're, <laughs> we're gonna bail on it now. Um, but I also don't know how much it would cost to run water from Mark Elmore's place. So this, yeah. now that I've got oriented, uh -huh. this line that I see in the road, is that a surveyed line for the center line? This, I think, I don't know if it's a surveyed line, it's just the line, this is from E911 viewer that they use, so. And this red line here is just their driveway. Okay. So um, he does have a couple trees here. There is a way that we could do that. Um, if we discontinued that portion of the road, they can turn around at Mark Boacher's right here. Um, they do in the winter, right? I believe so. They do not plow that. No, they, um, they. Not yet. With, with right. nobody living at this other house, house they yeah. haven't been plowing. Yeah. They go right to about that, past that the driveway. Does, the only thing I can see is someone complaining is we've had a couple of folks in the past ask about doing things, um, either reducing their taxes or fixing when the river take, starts taking their property. Mm -hmm. And if we do this, do something for this, are we contradicting what we said no to these that, other people? Well, I mean, they that the technically property is this- state property, isn't it? Right, where his border, he said that he has lost some footage of his land and sounds crazy, but the state would tell you that he then owns under the river a portion, that he didn't actually lose acreage. But that's, I'm just telling you what they say. So what we could do is you have a couple options here. One is obviously moving the road. The other piece is you could discontinue the piece. And so that we could plow to Marks and turn around. But that house, Danforth and Rogers, apparently is getting repaired and they're going to be putting it on the market. So there's currently not a ton of room for them to turn around that the plow truck right there if they come up the hill from Pam's. Um, yeah, they don't always do that. I remember years ago we had a heavy wet snowstorm late in the year and power lines were down everywhere. And I tried to get down that road to avoid the ones on the bottom of Royalton Hill Road. And then I actually had to drive all the way down to Sharon to get on the interstate to drive to Barry. Because yeah. that was never plowed all yeah, the way through. Yeah, because they, they don't plow it. For Denny Stearns. And didn't. as because it was on such a small road with so few people on it, the town didn't plow it till late. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would plow down to Louis Rogers. Yep. And that was always yep. blocked. Yep. Yeah. 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 Never because, plowed while I was plowing. Yeah, nobody no, went we down there during the winter. Yeah, we don't plow that. Just like fake <clears throat> Ringe is a class three, but we don't plow that in the winter. You have the ability not to because it can, you know, because it's dangerous for a place to turn around, but so whoever buys that house, it isn't normally plowed anyways, um, but just so you know that they are fixing it up, I believe, to be sold. That would just be a private driveway. <clears throat> huh? That would just be a private driveway. It would be just a private driveway, right, <laughs> yeah. for Mark. But so, I, you know, it could be just something to think about. You all could make site visits out there, go out and check it out yourself, and we could put it on a future agenda. It's a, um, Mark had been in and just said he felt it was unsafe, and, and Morgan agreed. He said it's just eroded, eroded, and it would cost you a mint to try to ever, you know, build a toe of the slope to bring in material in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it costs a lot. Yeah, yeah, it is. So I don't know if you guys just want to take, <clears throat> go out and look at it yourselves, and we could put it on the next agenda and just, Kind of, <clears throat> just wanted to give you the information. Yeah, and apparently. And I could, in the meantime, ask about the distance and figure out the water line issue. And apparently, at some point, a potential fix there was to move the road where the where the black marker drawing is. Yeah. Um, 
but it sounded like it didn't get very far. Maybe. Right, yeah, that's what Mark For whatever reason. But, yeah, Mark said a previous but, town uh, manager and someone from the state had come out and then he never heard from him again. And <clears throat> that can be a road if you give them water. What, that sounded like it. We haven't negotiated that yet, but he did say, you know, I've always wanted to get water to this property and it comes down to Mark Elmore. And um, I just said, I don't know the distance and I'm not that sure. Would be a, that'd be a fair amount of distance from yeah, water. Exactly. Mm, and, and currently we can't add it. Not to mention, I don't even know if you could put it on that, right. that service. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So there could be, there is a process through the state how you, um, you could be a buyout there where you buy pay Mark money for the value of that land, and I think that VTrans uh, has a schedule for that sort of thing, but. Probably the best, well, my vote would be to go back at this corner and just go from here to his driveway, so we don't get slept. If that erodes, it erodes, but so we aren't doing this again, or some or next group at 20 years now is doing it again. We just <laughs> Cut the corner off. Take that corner right the hell off. Yeah. Oh, are you saying discontinue or just yeah, cut from, across? Just from the cut end across. Of the well, it would just depend how much property he's yeah. willing to, yeah. you know. Well, it's taking half as long. <clears throat> yeah. We're not going to fix the road. Do you want us to put a road in or do you want to do without? Yeah. Well, Here's he might the, find the with a dead end. I don't know. But I could certainly ask him, but I also need to find out this distance <clears throat> and if we could even add water if that was what he was. I mean, you do that and... I mean, if you're not going to do any riprap or anything there, that, ro that erosion is going to continue. It is going to continue. Mm. It's, not, it's not going to be many years, and you're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. It's going to keep coming. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. He said, that told uh, Chris and I, that when you, right there, that it was far enough out before that there actually was a driveway off from Graham right there down to the state's property. So he was, I think he said 30 feet that he, he had lost or that it had eroded. <clears throat> so, so. What you guys want to take a peek at it and move it to the future? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Hey, if we're giving out dead ends, I'll take one. Yeah, <laughs> I bet you will. I just dead end Christian right there. No need to maintain that bridge. But that's right. Set. I like it. Next, next. Next agenda. Okay. All right. Just be careful near the edge of the uh, yes. slope. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's when you're right there. So yeah. But if you fell off it, I think you'd be okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was looking at it after the fact. It's pretty sandy. I think, yeah, exactly. You know, you get a 15 foot, and then you'll yeah. land on some soft. Yeah. Stuff. Just for so. the most part, he owns from behind his house on Royalton Hill Road all the way down to the river, and all in back of. Um, like Michelle Barbano's property, everybody's property mm -hmm. down there, he yep. owns a little bit and then the state owns a little bit. Yep. And then he has that property. Yep. So it's a whole big connecting piece for him. It yeah. is, yep, it is. So I don't think he's opposed to it being a dead end either, but um, we'll have to I'm find out. opposed to band-aids. You're opposed to? Band-aids. Oh, I thought you said abandon. Mm -hmm. Now band-aids, no, I agree, because you're gonna lose it all eventually. I just don't know how long. All right, so we'll move to the next agenda so it gives you all a chance to go out. So, but yeah, Chris is right. Be careful at the edge because it's when you're standing there, it's oh yeah, it's it's going down. So, be careful. Sounds fun. Don't yeah, don't do anything crazy. I'll get my drone up. I'll go look at it. There you go. Way back. Or if you want to go in the other way, you can go down to the. You could go down to Bethel Mills lower yard, and walk down the train tracks a little ways, and then you can you can see the bottom half of it down there. A little harder to get to because from the tracks of the river is probably I don't know, less than 100 yards, but it's pretty thick to get through there. But, <coughs> if you wanted to go that direction, but let's take side by side down. Drive right there. All right, mm -hmm. and we have the Sullivan and Powers audit. So I had <clears throat> anyone who picked up their packet got an audit, like the full one. Dave, I just put portions of the audit into the packet just because it's a whole thing, but you can, I have copies here. Um, so I think that, uh, so a couple things are, one is that they're recommending that we make some changes to our purchasing policy to adhere to um, comply with the uniform guidance for purchases using federal funds. I have one for like federal grant money, but so they're making recommendations there. That's all, so that's a new one. Uh, investment and banking policy, they've said that before. 
that we need to do that. Um, same thing with fraud risk assessment. Uh, reconciliation of balance sheet accounts is going to come up forever because if you're off and they have to make an adjustment, that's it. So um, they also made a suggestion that we, because we budget for current taxes at gross, um, he's, they're suggesting that we um, that we may be overestimating our tax revenue. So by counting delinquents and our regular taxes, so they recommend that we revise our budgeting process to reflect to you know to not do that. And we have been slowing it down. We've been knocking it down by five thousand a year every year, anyways. Um, so there's so there's that information, and especially now, it's definitely something to think about at budget time because um, I put in your packet the um, current, you know, what's currently delinquent in water and what's currently delinquent in taxes. So you can see um, that by, you know, lowering that makes sense because we just don't have as much, you know, outstanding. So I'm looking for those numbers. Hang on a second. You put it in your town manager report. Yeah, I also have made a copy of it and put it in your packets so you can see it. Um, the back of the packet. Yeah, so, so the, the delinquent taxes are now 113811 but that includes the portion that we have collected that wasn't paid at, at May 15th when it was due. Mm. So, you know, that's could, so, so those people have gotten a notice and with the new changes. Just what you're looking for, here's the water. Yeah, the can water. I see that one in the taxes? And so you can see that when you look at the breakdown that I put in your package, which was a summary sheet, that that shows you that the past delinquent taxes, like 2018 to 2022, that's one property and it's so small, we've never put them up for tax sale. We've been trying, uh, it's one of those things where the property is on Gilead Road and it abuts um, something of W.B. Rogers or Jeff Gilman's and because the person who owns it has passed away and they didn't leave it in their will. It's like trying to go back and it changed the estate. And so at some point we will sell it at tax sale just to clean it up. But for, you know, a couple hundred bucks, it just hasn't been worth it. Uh, the 2023 delinquencies is 1700 bucks and that's just five people. So when you look at really what's delinquent, you're not talking about a lot of money. The, the 111,000, um, you know, we'll start collecting on um, they will start notifying banks, making payment arrangements, that sort of thing. If people have mortgages, they'll maybe their bank didn't pay, so they're getting that sorted out. So, um, so that's it's come down. So that makes sense what they're saying. So it's something that we should deal with when we do the audit. Um, you know, and, and I had put in the packet just stuff we never talk about is um, when I started in 2017, Bethel had a deficit of 1.3 million, uh, over 245,000 in delinquent taxes and delinquent water sewer over 85,000. So now we have a positive fund balance of 1.7 million. Uh, delinquent taxes are now half that, and um, our water sewer is delinquent is $8,700. So. You know, it's taken time, but you can see that we've, you know, we've cleaned up, you know, the, the deficit and the debt and we're moving in the right direction. A part of that was because when we had to bond for all that debt, it was because of, you know, overspending for years and we had to do something with it. So that's one of the reasons that pushed us into a positive fund balance is we handled the debt um, that was pre-existing for multiple reasons. Um, so those are some of the recommendations from the auditor, but certainly um, I did you up a spreadsheet of, um, which we can talk about audit time, or budget time as well, is this shows you what your available fund balance is made up of. Mm -hmm. And you know, people, it's not you know, necessarily cash in the bank, some of it's receivables or prepaid items, um, things like that, deferred revenues, but trying to do a calculation, and, and I've drafted a policy as well for, um, which we had talked about developing was an undesignated fund balance, how to use it moving forward. So I have drafted a policy so we can talk about that as we get closer to audit time as well. But there's definitely some things to think about, how much percentage of the undesignated balance you wanna keep. And a portion of that you know, should be kept, they, how many 
months you have of bills or whatever happens, you know, you have a, another event, you know, like COVID or whatever, and you see yellow steel and a lot of things just get really big and really expensive. And so just like your own at home when you're saving. Um, so, and then there'll be some decisions to make about what do you want to do with some of the undesignated fund balance? You, you know, ERAF can be paid off, um, move some to reserve funds, that sort of thing. So there's, there's options too that need to be discussed at the board. And so it's, you have it now, you can start thinking about that. But once you go through the audit, if you have any questions, um, certainly let me know. We'll be at that time already. They were pretty delayed this year, no fault of ours. And uh, we'll be doing this again real soon, at June 30, so. <clears throat> Well, they, I mean, the nice thing, obviously, is, you know, years ago when I got on the board, it was, you know, we ran deficits every year. You know, we voted a budget, and then we spent whatever we thought we needed to spend and <laughs> didn't really follow those budgets very well. And uh, so, I mean, the, the nice thing is that we, we have, the, well, we have the issue of now trying to figure out how much money should we keep on hand, mm -hmm. um, which is a good problem to have, um, especially with the interest rates getting higher and higher, because... I mean, you know, even even then, not only did we run a deficit, but we did a lot of short-term borrowing too, you know, to meet payrolls and things like that. We're not having to do that, mm -mm. Um, and and you know, and that was back then when whatever interest rates were less than one percent, and now they're five and a half percent to borrow money. So yeah, uh, not borrowing money and cash is king again. So it's right. <clears throat> um, I know when I was talking to Teresa about it, I can't remember. There was a gentleman that came that visited the select board. Lucian? No, like half a dozen years ago. It was audit related something. Remember and he? Oh, it was Fred Duplicis from had asked Sullivan and Powers. Some yeah. questions, I don't know, Paul yeah. might've been on the board, but yeah, I, I know I had Fred. asked a question about, you know, how much, how much funds should a town of our size have on hand? Right. So we're not doing short term borrowing, we're making payrolls and all that stuff. And I, I remember him saying three or $400,000 was kind of like this number i don't i don't know if he figured that out on a percent or if it was mm -hmm. based upon your budget size or whatever but yep. um so I, I definitely you know i think there's some good opportunities for us to not only keep cash on hand uh, but also potentially pay off some debts that we have with us and and potentially offer some money up as you know a tax incentive yep. to like reducing to individual, the tax rate. Yeah. yeah. We've done that before so in other I think towns. It might take shave like ten yeah. grand off to mm -hmm. kind of reduce taxes and whatever. So Yeah. So I think there's you know a lot of good things there and yeah. and you know, we have a good fund balance now, but we also had a negative one point two, three million dollars when whatever that was. Twenty seven years ago or whatever. Yeah, twenty seven. When we had to bury that. So Right. Yeah, three, three years in a row. Three years. Yeah. That couldn't so it's a good good problem to have, and then and then you know there's some things that have come about since then, like you know thinking about you know every three and a half four years, unfortunately we have a flood event. So mm -hmm. how much money should we be keeping on hand, knowing that we're gonna have to go into another flood event? You know, because yeah. it seems like every time we do have a flood event, it's hundred or two hundred thousand dollars that comes out of the town's pocket right. for matching monies. You know, right. mm -hmm. yeah, they're not. So <clears throat> yeah, how do we how do we fund that and that way we don't have to go back to the voters and say we need more money or right because we carry eraf in the budget now or as borrow expense, money you know right as a budget expense now we carry yeah. eraf you know right. we have continuously since we flooded 2019 mm -hmm. twice in 2023 and mm -hmm. i'm just praying for a drought now and, and then some <laughs> of the other things we have to you know coming into the budget season is that um what we're on year two of the five years of uh Three. Transfer station. Transfer, Transfer station, station. That fifty thousand that they so, pay us is going to go away. You know, so, so <coughs> that's if, a change there that we have to start negotiating. Through. Yeah. So if we pay off um, the ERAF and it might, you know what I mean? If we pay off the ERAF and we lose. We're not getting that revenue from the sale of the transfer station. Then it's not affecting the taxpayers by saying, "Oh, we jacked up the budget by sixty thousand and we lost sixty thousand in revenue." So, you know, it, you know, it's a lot to, to consider. But obviously, your first priority is always the taxpayers. Um, so anyway, so the audit is a lot. I realize that there's like at least ten pages just about 
VMERS, uh, or VSERS, our state retirement, which is they look at the whole state retirement, and, and I still don't even know how to do that calculation. The, I get a spreadsheet from the state guru, and he sends it to me, and I give it to the auditors, and so there's a lot of pages in there. A lot of this is now um, general accounting-based standards, so GASB, and I don't know who comes up with some of this stuff sometimes, but it's crazy. You're going to have a chat with them and the fact that some of us are gaining on age and that print right there is pretty hard to read. <laughs> pretty hard well, to read. Well, maybe they don't want you to read that. Part. Yeah. And you no. thought about that, Dave? <laughs> to be honest with you, I cannot. Maybe yeah. that's the part they're hiding something. Get some 400 cheaters. You'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm going yeah. to get some different glasses because I can't, I can't read that page. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you need it, I'll blow it up for you. But yeah, it's um, so <clears throat> some of the audit is is just is that too as well mm -hmm. but certainly if you want to if you didn't get a hard copy and you want one let me know and we'll be moving on to the next one as i said june 30th it's a new audit um so mm -hmm. we'll be right back at it again good anything left on the town manager's report that we didn't go over um let's see so we were issued our first grant agreement finally for some of our fema money so <clears throat> we can expect 205,000 in the next couple of weeks. Um, I submitted our grant reimbursement for the skate park for 26,400 and a uh, road grant for 32,000. So we're kind of trying to get some of the money back with FEMA. <coughs> they still have not obligated all of our projects. And I have another FEMA meeting. Next week on the 12th, I have to take his name is St. Julian. I have to take St. Julian. He's coming to Bethel, and I'm taking him to see Sugar Hill, Finley Bridge, and the pump station because we haven't done any work there. I did just issue an um, RFP for the uh, engineering on Sugar Hill because that's a massive culvert. That's easily a million-dollar project. So that is out. So hopefully we'll see some more money coming back in from FEMA and... Um, and we can, you know, deal with that. So, so what is still owed to us? Uh, so I think that we were, we were looking for close to a half million, or a little bit less than a half million. After so, the 205? Yeah, so okay. we're still looking for half the money. Although federal, the federal highway for Camp Brook has been paid. They're, they're mm. pretty fast, and they let you, like, submit for it as you're going along, which is great. FEMA does not work that way. And until all your projects are obligated and paid by FEMA, the state won't release your 12.5%. So they hold on to their 12.5% till the end. So and, they've um, paid pretty close to two-thirds of what? Yeah. Because we had a million and a half dollars worth of yeah. FEMA work, right? Yeah. So we're, you know, working, and I luckily have a new PDMG. She's really good. So, um, so Jane Strait was hired to work in the Lister's office, and she will be um, also. Pam is appointing her as her assistant town clerk and treasurer. Uh, she's already been a terrific addition to the staff, and she's so she's starting. So she will. We won't have a Lister now. We'll have an assessor, but she'll work in the office doing the paperwork and stuff, and um, filling in for Pam when. Um, when she goes, and she hasn't run out of the office screaming yet, so I figure that's a good start. Um, Chris Fors, our VOREC project manager, has overseen the completion of the Carla's Meadow Trail, ADA sidewalks at the Rec Grant, and, and other meetings and stuff. They're talking about uh, signage and wayfinding and all that. So I have to say, Chris has been terrific. Uh, a great Did they get anywhere manager. with the, the other piece of the VOREC finally, permitting issue? Yes. Finally, Chris, you know, God bless him, he stuck with it. And the gentleman, the gentleman from the state finally was saying to Chris, well, you haven't adhered to the standards that we haven't written yet. Right. And Chris was like, did you just hear what you said? He's like, that. No, you can't hold us to a standard. First of all, the town has their own zoning regs. You've already got a letter from the town manager, zoning administrator, saying we don't need a permit because our own town plan and our own zoning regulations don't require one there. Now you're trying to hold us. You've held us up for months to the part we had to get an extension to go into the next construction season. And he's like, to, for standards that you haven't created yet, we think what happened is that people used their VOREC money built trails and probably it got wiped out in July in the flood event. So 
well, that's not my fault, and so, <laughs> or Chris Ford's, but like, finally the guy conceded, well, if you just move ahead and it ends up in my queue, I won't look at it. And it took us months to get to that. So, yeah, and, and so we didn't even need to send it to him anyways because our current zoning regs say we don't have to, but finally, we're just, I said to Kelly, just send it to him and yeah. move on. And it, they were also worried about some sort of, it sounds like something that's coming down the pipe from but, this legislature. Like that basically once we build this it'd be labeled a structure yeah. and then we could potentially go out there and either protect or maintain our structure by adding it's the like whole thing you know say after the fact if you wanted to um, protect it from erosion you yeah. could haul in a bunch of stone yeah. to line it and uh, so they're worried about those things like yeah. then all of a sudden they wouldn't have a say in it because then you're right. protecting your asset. But the whole thing was ridiculous. So we was... ended up cutting it way back to what the trail would even be like and where it was. They wouldn't even come and see it. And we're talking that one gentleman was in Sharon. So trying to get an on-site meeting was mm. nuts. But, <laughs> so, so, so they're moving forward with, so, so when do you think that will go out to bid or? I'm not, I'd have to talk to Chris will it be now this year? because he, I don't know. I'd have to ask her. I can't say right now. I don't know. Oh. And um, there, because we were delayed and he'd had a couple estimates, whether or not they would still, you know, hold to that, I don't know. So, but we did get an extension. Oh, that's right. They had yeah. bid it. Yeah, they had bid right. it, but then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. even though we didn't require a permit from the state, the state was, there's not even a permit on their website. Like, they mm -hmm. couldn't even provide us a permit that we had to apply for. <laughs> so, it was just really... Crazy, but anyways, uh, so we did get an extension. Obviously, they caused a delay, you know, through Vorex, so mm. they did give us an extension. But I'll tell you, the one department is not talking to the other department at well, the state. It's been like that forever. It's more than one. Yeah, <laughs> so it was a thing. I don't think they even know who the other departments are. Yeah, so that should be that. Alrighty. So, onward and upward, as they say. And select board meeting minutes from the 29th of May. Oh, I wrote the 27th, so my agenda's incorrect. 29, 24. I wasn't at this one, so if there's anything that um, needs to be amended, or are you good to approve it as written? Motion to approve. <laughs> Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 We've got a lot of other minutes in there. Yeah, there was the um, conservation commission had theirs. There was a planning. Planning. EIC. Um, I didn't see anything from the rec committee. No. EIC. No, I didn't see anything from the rec committee either, or or anything from energy committee or anything like that. Nope. But are they still meeting the energy committee? Yep. I think that they've had they they've just uh, been regrouping. Um, Vander is their new um, chair, and he'd emailed me the other, we'd had an email exchange because they got the $4,000 MERP grant, which um, mm -hmm. I think goes for education, and when I wrote to him and said, look, that money is, you know, you're gonna spend it by June 30th or what? And they wanted to use it for charging stations, and I'm like, Eek, that's not what the grant says, and you'd have to get select board permission, and that's nothing that they've been on board with in the past. So I, have he didn't hasn't replied, mm -hmm. so I just told me that you know at the next energy committee meeting they should discuss that because the MERP grant specifically talks about education. So, mm -hmm. um, so I know they're they're meeting. I'm about, uh, I don't know the status of their minutes. Um, the other thing was there was a lot of questions about the public right away. So I had put this whole little article in here of the Vermont Institute for Government the public right of way in you. So mm -hmm. I thought that was mm -hmm. interesting. Yep. Did you see it in the packet? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then budget status report. Um, I guess I just had some comments, so. Yeah, hang on, let me get there. Oops. Okay. Just being that we are in most cases ahead of budget and departments, 
um, you know, maybe, maybe especially in the public works end of things, if they have anything that needs to get done, yep. like do it before the end of this month. Yep. Well, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, any type of maintenance on equipment, mm -hmm. if there's anything that is coming up that we might need. Yep. Or might as well get it done now while we have the money in this budget. Exactly. Um, so that was the first one. Yeah. And then I was just, I know we had talked about, I know it's tough when we have two people or three people or, you know, depending on vacations and stuff, but, mm -hmm. you know, the more we have some availability on some materials there, so the more of that we could do between now and the end of June on some graveling and some grading right. and, and that's chloriding, I would yeah. recommend getting that done. Because you see, I put a note in there, we're expecting mm -hmm. 45000 so I haven't had that invoice yet and then the reclamation for Gilead, so once we get that, I did talk to Morgan about ordering more material because uh, mm -hmm. obviously is the biggest issue is that we need more material for the road. So if there's going to be um, money like sweeping, we're not going to hire someone to do sweeping. They can do it now. So there's going to be some other money that's going to be available. So we did talk about that. And Pam's paying bills this week, so that'll give me a really good idea of what's left mm -hmm. in his budget. And we have been talking about that. Okay. Uh, just it's a good time to do it rather yeah. than put it on the undesignated fund. Exactly. No, I agree. I also talked to Gary today about the fire department. Same thing. He was holding a couple invoices. Um, so I talked to him a little bit too about his balance, what he had left. Okay. And did you I, see from that warning in 1985, uh, there was only four appropriations I on that warning? That. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't even. And the White River Valley Ambulance was only like $4,000 for yeah. the whole year. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We turned back the clock. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, and I did well, order I went the back signs. into the late 70s when doing the research for that. Yeah. And the, 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 the senior center from Royalton was right there, right from the very beginning. There were a couple mm -hmm. that were there. The, the uh, home health one was there. But, nice. the, but they're like $800, yeah. you know, $900. And then in 1980, they decided, the select board decided to have the, a committee, a five-person committee. Oh, no kidding. Recommend, instead of doing it as it used to be, individual yeah, entities right. would submit to, mm -hmm. to the select board. Mm -hmm. And then they decided to combine it all into a, a single unit. Mm -hmm. and it, it said, if you read it in there, it's the... Uh, Community members appointed by the select board. They have this fancy way of wording it. Oh, cool. Um, I did order the signage, <clears throat> so we have two more um, out of the constable's budget. <clears throat> we had two more of the signs, the solar signs, you know, when you come in to, for speed. So I did order those um, on the 4th. The, <clears throat> and then when we get down to like the water and sewer budgets. I mean, again, I've just, you know, anything that Richard can yep. do now, mm -hmm. anything that needs to be maintained or replaced or whatever, do it now. Yep. But the water one, just because the way it's our accounting is with the, of the loan. are we as similar on the water budget as we are, like 80% yeah. area? I think so, yeah. I think that we're, yes. Because that could be the case, like, if we know of any exactly simple water line Especially stuff that needs to be fixed or... Right, especially with sewer, Get that because done. that system is aging, and and he knows he has money like for water, like repair hydrants six thousand, which we're already doing hydrants in the project, mm -hmm. so he's not doing any additional hydrants. So he's aware of that, and then um, obviously for them, which is nice, is they don't really have any reserve funds, water, sewer, so anything that's unspent here goes into their reserve fund, and um, which is nice. We did budget for that, and sewer is the issue. That that that. Uh, is aging, so he has been focused on that and getting equipment. Um, so, and the other thing we did with the water sewer is, the at times the water sewer has owed, just like the landfill used to, owed the general fund money. So we have budgeted, I think this year we budgeted sewer because sewer owed the general fund, but I don't mm -hmm. think water did not. So we've also been trying to pay that back, debt back, so that, because for a long time, your general fund was supporting the landfill and water and sewer, and you know nobody had any money, so they were, uh, mm -hmm. so we're trying to. Well, it's also it sometimes these things like certain items you may only invoice once a quarter, yep. or, or 
every six months, like sludge removal. Like, right, exactly. It doesn't look like he's done that in a while, so it might be due, you know. Right. So. Yep. And sometimes and then, he'll do what, and he does what Tim did is if he has another expense coming and he knows he hasn't, you know, because it's hard to budget. Sludge removal, we tend to budget a little bit higher because you just don't know. Right. If something changes and the makeup of the effluent changes, then you could mm -hmm. end up pumping more. So it's always a, right. it's always a tricky one. But yep, we'll be talking about it today. This week is accounts payable. So everybody, you know, if we have bills, they'll get paid and this week, and then I'll be able to see what the, you know, uh, everybody's budget really looks like so that's so speaking of the water project how um any updates on well, the water project when when it's going to be done when they're moving out of sand hill well sand hill has stuff? sand hill is like oh a mini version of main street and all the stuff that you find um luckily a and e is the engineer for the storm water as well as the water so bob has both sets of prints so we some of the things that have broken, which is stormwater, they're just band-aiding it, knowing that we're doing a bigger stormwater thing. And we just got EPA notification today um, for our, um, you know, NEPA funding. So anyway, so we're through that. So we are getting ready to bid out the stormwater portion. So I talked to Mike Maynard. We exchanged emails today, and he said, look, Put it out to bid. He's like, we've got some really good pricing at this time of year before. We've also got some really crappy pricing. So if it's too expensive, we don't have to accept any of the bids and we'll rebid it and we'll do it in the spring. But if it comes in great because people have openings, we'll get it done. So that's uh, so where we are with the stormwater portion. The water portion, um, I don't know how much longer they're gonna be on Sand Hill. We actually have a meeting tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, here. Um, they started on the pump station, because Carroll Concrete was up there pouring concrete, so they've started on a booster pump station up near Crystal Drive. Crystal Drive will be one of the last streets, I think, that they do just because it's so wet up there. They're waiting for it to dry out a little bit. Um, and they have gone back and taken care of some other issues, uh, I believe, on Graham and Highland, where, you know, we were putting down seed in November. Things are really settled, so they went back and we're dealing with all that, so. Oh. That's tomorrow, so I have a better idea of that tomorrow. As I also want to know, Jesse, we were talking about this earlier, is when they're going to do the directional bore uh, near Babes on the town property. So hopefully we have better schedule answers so tomorrow. So put it out to bid if it comes back with a reasonable cost. Is that something that can be finished up yep. this year? Yes. Yep. It would be nice to get it all finished for It would be winter. nice to get it all done. Yeah. No more mm -hmm. yep. uh, stuff. On the other side. So worst case scenario, there's a thin layer of paving over what we've torn up now. And then in the spring, we come back in, do the storm water, rebuild the road. It's all paved. So, but fingers crossed, we get a good price and we can do the work now. And um, and we are bidding paving. Yeah. Keep them there and, just and they may be, you know, it depends how they yeah. bid. They're already yeah, mobilized. Yeah. It might be easier. And then the yeah. paving, we did bid out separately. Um, I did ask for that to bid separately. So, um, but anyway, so that hopefully everything, Mike will be getting that out. We just got notification, but EPA, um, you know, takes a minute. <laughs> so, you know, it's great. I mean, we got $600,000. Let's face it, we can't look a gift horse in the mouth. The fact is, we're a little late going out, but we also are being given $600,000. So, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> can't really complain too badly. All right. Any other business come before the board before we go into executive session? Okay, hearing none, just need uh, motion to go into inter uh, executive session to talk about performance of town manager. So moved. Second. All right.